Hi YouTube, it's AC Dodd here. Um, I thought I'd do a short series of videos on um, the machine tools I use for some of the work I do on uh, classic mini engines. Uh, so today let's, let's kick that off um, with uh, perhaps one of the, uh, the most basic machine tools but uh, something that I've um, worked on and modified over the years and that is uh, one of my pillar drills. This is my Ajax B16L bench mounted pillar drill. Uh, I've had this quite a while and I basically inherited it off my dad. I've installed it on the end of my workbench. Um, as you can already see, it's not quite standard and there's a few extra modifications which we'll go through. Um, it's a great little machine. I use it basically for uh, general purpose work, general purpose drilling, um, you know, whether it be in drilling, you know, extra holes in, uh, through cylinder heads for the 11 stud conversions, or uh, I even use it for valve seat, um, you know, valve seat roughing out and things like that. Uh, it's got a little bit of run out on the on the spindle, but nothing major, uh, and it's uh, perfectly usable for, um, you know, the usual general purpose drilling. Uh, the other thing I use it for is uh, it gets used for my um, recurving of distributors. So this is the machine I use to spin up the distributors to verify the advanced curve and the modifications I do to them. Uh, you can already tell there's a few extra modifications on this. Um, so first of all, this is a variable speed machine, uh, which I've um, uh, completed the work to and modified the machine and added bits and pieces to make it variable speed. The interesting thing about these machines is uh, the original speeds are on the front. As you can see here in the UK, uh, we work on the we run on the 50 hertz electricity supply, and you can see the minimum speed is 380 rpm, um, and that that's great really if you've you know you do some uh, sort of light metal work and some uh, you know woodwork really. These these pillar drills are really designed for sort of general purpose across a number of materials, and the speed ranges are, uh, are kind of chosen to suit. Um, in this particular workshop, as you know, I, I spend most of my time cutting iron and steel and various other bits and pieces, and, and 380 RPM is quite frankly, uh, you know, not really slow enough. So uh, the modifications basically uh, performed to this machine were really twofold, and that really was to slow it down was the first uh, option to give me slower speeds, and then secondly, to produce a variable speed. So, the new chart on the side gives you the typical range of speeds. Now, the uh, the numbers on the left indicate the pulley ratio because you still use the gears um, to, to, to change the range of speeds. And then you vary the motor speed to give you the, the speeds there that are, um, are, are quoted. So you've got three on the, uh, on the chart, you've got three ranges of speeds. Um, basically, on the left-hand speed chart, you've got at the top there, it says 35, 245 and 490. Um, 35 RPM is, the, is a typically uh, the lowest speed that you can get, but there's not much torque available because the, uh, the motor power drops off considerably when you get down to that speed. So there in the middle is what's known as the maximum power RPM. So that's the RPM in the bottom range where the maximum motor power is available, okay? So the way I've got this variable frequency drive set up is uh, the 50 hertz, uh, the full rated speed, is the middle, the middle column there. And on the right hand side is 100 hertz. So 100 hertz output to the motor will give the speeds on the right hand side. Um, clearly, if you were using that continuously at 100 hertz, you would, you would overheat the motor. But in the case of a pillar drill and the work I give it, it never gets, it never even, um, you know, never even gets warm because it just doesn't do enough work. So in reality, uh, in this particular application, it never, you know, it never causes a problem. Okay. So another modification. Uh, was to use uh, to install a um, an RPM readout. Now the idea here is obviously if you're varying the speed of the motor, uh, you don't really know you know what speed you're at um, other than the rated speeds. So with the addition of a readout, 
you can tell what the spindle's doing. So now I've just switched that machine on in bottom gear um, and that's doing, as indicated, 65, 66 RPM. And you can see, I, can, I can't stop that machine. Well, I can if I really try. Um, one of the beautiful things about variable frequency drives is when you get down to the very lowest speeds, the torque drops off. So if that was a geared drive, you would have massive torque available and you could possibly hurt yourself um, because the spindle wouldn't stop if it locked up. Uh, whereas in this case, because the power drops off on the motor, um, if I try really hard, I can actually stall that. Okay. Now, as soon as you go up a speed, so like just to 82, the power is such that you can't stop that. So one of the things you need to do if you're designing your own um, variable speed conversion for a pedal drill uh, is to think about the lowest speed you want and the torque availability. So most of the speed ranges I use, you know, I'm looking at, you know, sort of 120, 100 maybe, and then sort of 200, 200, 240, something like that. So. I use the lower speeds quite a lot and uh, at these speeds, uh, you know, I don't touch this now because there's enough power there to seriously, you know, probably break my wrist or uh, at least damage me, my hand. So um, using a variable speed has many benefits. The main, the main advantage of which, as soon as I've had the variable speed drive uh, and the ability to slow the machine down and basically infinitely set any speed that I like um, I've not needed to sharpen drills so drill sharpening reduces right down purely because you can match the speed uh, the cutting speed of any material uh, straight off the bat to make it easier I use these uh, graphs uh, which are made up um, based on the cutting speed for various different materials and all you do is you look at the chart there's my cast iron one on the left is the RPM and the diameter of the drill bit across the bottom for high speed steel drill bits. You look up to the uh, the line on the graph and then you read across to the RPM. So let's take one example uh, and if we go down to the cast iron chart and then we look across at 10 millimeters, see that? And we go up and we go across, you will find that 10 mil is about 800 RPM. Okay, so we want 800 RPM. So we look at the speed, the new speed ranges, and if we look down the pulley ratios, we will find uh, a speed that gives us uh, the, the appropriate speed. So if we look at number three, we look at the range 100, 707, and 1400. Um, that's pretty much the appropriate uh, pulleys for that um, speed range that we want there. So let's set that up. Inside the pillar drill is the usual uh, stack of pulleys at each end. So we just need to move that over and move the belt into the middle range. There you go. Move that to the middle range and we're ready to drill. Close the top down, start the machine. And then we simply turn the dial to the speed we want. Now I normally find that on my charts, the actual speed is perhaps a little bit hot. So what I would uh, suggest we do there is we just bring that down to about 725 and that will be perfect for drilling cast iron with a 10 mil drill. And this is the beauty of this system is as you're drilling, if you find that you're perhaps running a bit hot, you can just turn the dial and knock off 25 RPM or as little RPM or as, you know, very, very small adjustments and you can set any speed you want. It's completely variable. Fantastic setup. Now, in order to operate this, I use, uh, this particular machine uses a cheap Huang Yang um, one and a half kilowatt in, uh, inverter. It's actually uh, a single phase set setup. The power I have in the workshop is single phase. Um, so what happens is, is I've got a spur, which is taken off of the, uh, the main um, ring main in the workshop. 
that comes up to the uh, inverter. The inverter does its tricks. And then I have installed at the back a three phase six pole motor. Now the reason for the six pole and not the four pole is the six pole gives me the reduction speed that I'm looking for. So a normal four pole motor will run at about 1425 RPM or, or thereabouts. Um, this actual six pole motor, its synchronous speed is, is 900 RPM. Now that means that uh, you've got a lot more torque available um, straight from the motor and you don't need any gear reduction because effectively the motor is giving you that reduction that you're looking for. So the other thing about that motor is it's the normal motor on this machine is a half horsepower rating. I actually chose a three quarter horsepower motor for this machine just to give me a little bit more available when I'm um, lugging the motor at low speeds um, using the VFD. That way I maximise the power available at low speeds. Um, the other good thing about that means that, uh, you know, this motor never struggles when I'm doing any, any particular work. So if I, I, can, I can use a three quarter inch drill uh, and it will push a one inch drill through a piece of plate, a uh, piece of mild steel plate. Um, although the motor itself has got more capability than the rigidity of the machine. So I wouldn't recommend, you know, going overboard on the motor. So just going up one size from uh, half horse to three quarter horse is all I needed on this machine. The other things I did is the controls. I incorporated them into the existing um, uh, switches on the machine. So as you can see there, the machine runs and stops using the existing controls. Um, the other thing is with the variable frequency drive, I've also got the option of forward and reverse. So I can click that while it's running and it'll stop and then reverse the chuck. Uh, this is good for tapping and various operations like that. There's no need to stop the chuck um, when you're forward and reversing. That's all digitally controlled by the inverter, which is a fantastic piece of kit. Uh, these are cheap, so I think I paid 80 quid for it. I think you can get these for about 70 something quid now. Um, they're a great start of variable frequency drive. Um, having used much more expensive ones, this is a Jaguar Cub uh, VFD, which is what I use on my milling machine. Um, these are a much higher quality, uh, much more energy efficient, and well, just better really, but, but you pay a lot more money for them. So this is a Jaguar Cub that I use on the mill. I've also got a Jaguar VXR, uh, which is what I use on the lathe. Um, and one of the last things I did to the machine was the addition of a, a decent hand chuck. So I bought an AccuPro uh hand chuck for it which has transformed the machine it's much easier to use this runs more um uh concentric than the original chuck um so all in all uh i think this is a great machine um i you know i would highly recommend anybody who has uh, an older machine and this isn't particularly old but one of the machines that hasn't got any uh you know has only got the fixed speeds is to seriously think about converting it uh, to variable frequency drive. It really makes these machines much more useful and much easier and they, you know much easier to use and much um, much much better on your tool life and you can get better job um, by, by using them. So uh, whether or not you use um, the Huang Yang inverter or you go for uh, you know a more expensive inverter um, I think for a pillar drill you're okay with the cheaper ones um, but things like um, motor load uh, if you use the Jaguar VXR range you'll get telemetry so you'll know what the motors powers con consumption the power it's drawn from the mains you'll also get information of motor load and things like that so you do get what you pay for really um, the most the biggest benefit about running VFDs especially now with the uh, cost of uh, electricity in the UK uh, is obviously you minimise the energy that the um, uh, the motor's using. So that a, v a variable frequency drive will only put the power in when you're applying the load. So uh, effectively, you save you know quite a bit on your operating costs. The other benefit is as well you don't get big inrush currents when you start the motor because in this case I have it programmed. So. It
it ramps the motor up over a few seconds okay so you don't have that issue where you get an instantaneous high capacitance uh, load dropped on your uh, electricity supply so anyway highly recommended that's my pillar drill and that's my uh, first machine tool that i was going to review um, anyway if you've got any questions then uh, please leave them below and i'll do my best to answer them thank you very much